Most people assume that only modern man had mastered the skill of flight. The slow development of technology and advancements in manufacturing techniques, allowing us to make more and more precise components, enabling exhaustive trial and error until flight was accomplished. However, there exists a series of documents written in the world's earliest language, which not only detail the construction of such flying machines, but even documents the test flights of these ancient flying crafts. The Mahabharata, the Ramayama, and the Puranas are just a few of these ancient Indian texts written in Sanskrit which detail these flight tests. The texts, in fact, give surprisingly detailed accounts of these ancient airships, also known as Vimanas. Detailed descriptions of the ship's construction are also given, with ancient wording which has since been translated into such phrases as graphite rod, copper coils, crystal indicator, stable angles, among many others. The texts also include details on anti-gravity, invisibility, photography, weapons, and interplanetary travel. For example, the following excerpt describes the propulsion and movement of the Vimana. Strong and durable must the body of the Vimana be made, like a great flying bird of light material. Inside, one must put the mercury engine with its iron heating apparatus underneath. By means of the power latent in the mercury, which sets the driving whirlwind in motion, a man sitting inside may travel a great distance in the sky. The movements of the Vimana are such that it can vertically ascend, vertically descend, move slanting forwards and backwards. With the help of the machines, human beings can fly in the air and heavenly beings can come down to Earth. Additionally, the following example is from one of the texts which demonstrates the power that these ships possessed. Gurkha flying in his swift and powerful Vimana, hurled against the three cities of the Varishnis and Andahakas, a single projectile charged with all the power of the universe. An incandescent column of smoke and fire, as brilliant as 10,000 suns, rose in all its splendor. It was the unknown weapon, the iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death, which reduced to ashes the entire race of the Varishnis and Andahakas. The corpses were so burnt that they were no longer recognizable. Hair and fingernails fell out. Pottery broke without cause. Foodstuffs were poisoned. To escape, the warriors threw themselves in streams to wash themselves and their equipment. It is speculated that the original writers of those texts were from an ancient civilization. They are also argued to have actually recorded real events which occurred between 15,000 and 26,000 years ago. The remnants of an ancient civilization with weapons similar to that of a nuclear warhead that existed in Pakistan and India over 15,000 years ago. The texts were originally passed down orally from generation to generation and were finally written down and preserved by Indian priests. Although debunking efforts have been experienced, the sheer antiquity of the scripts this information is found upon has left such explanations severely lacking. For instance, the academically accepted theory being that the texts are merely from Indian mythology, written between 300 BCE and 300 CE. This clearly in denial of the evidence, which suggests they are far older. However, evidence that the same such fields would usually embrace, yet when this means a conceding of such facts, they chose to ignore said evidence in favor of shaky alternatives. The texts are available for anyone to read. We implore you to investigate them yourselves for an insight into our very distant past. There are countless ancient sites found all over the planet that are not only far older than current academically claimed by individuals funded to come up with specifically permitted dates for their creation, selling one's integrity in favor of financial securities and an authoritative position within society, offered to them in return for their obedient deceits. Like a mule guided by a carrot, these individuals not only fear losing such reputations and handsome incomes, if one were to tell the truthful story regarding said sites, 
But they unquestionably turn a blind eye to the many areas that I cover, which are often not only implausible to state where the work of the particular permitted re-inhabitants placed much closer to us within history, but to suggest that such ancestors were capable of said feats is simply a preposterous claim. They often knowingly and deliberately overlook such features, due to their lack of any plausible explanation for such accomplishments. As such, with many ancient sites simply ignored or are disguised as closed book cases, with a dull, deliberately disinteresting tale of origin. These academics have some of the most intimate access to these ruins, yet deny the world's population a true account of said relics. For to suggest that a civilization less advanced than us accomplished the placement of megaliths far into the thousands of tons precisely atop one another with awe-inspiring stonework details and polygonal brickwork seemingly created like a puzzle of unique pieces, among many other baffling features, I feel is a proof of a deliberate agenda-driven conspiracy concealing said site's true origins. These unexplainable anomalies, the main reason why said individuals perceive me as a threat, not only to their funding, but also their positions of trusted authority within modern society. For the truths I tell, due to the inexplicable nature of their existence and their lack of exposure within academic studies, expose the field as a funded organized group of deceivers. These features are simply impossible for them to explain. Yet they continue to claim that they were built by people who were undeniably incapable of such feats. This is why many unexplainable artifacts simply vanish, and why many ancient sites are not only brushed under the proverbial carpet, but said features overlooked, ignored, and not mentioned at all. And our next relic is no exception. Many people have heard of the Great Wall of China, one of the only ancient ruins which is so large it can be seen from space. A very famous wall. Yet an even greater number of people are unaware of another great wall which can be found within India. Successfully overlooked by modern historians and antiquarians alike, this wall, known as the Kumpalgar, has been claimed to be merely a recently created ruin. Yet I feel, just like the many other ancient ruins found around the globe, is far older than currently claimed. It is of an astonishing size. And a number of alternative so-called fringe researchers, which academics like to derogatorily call them, have found substantial evidence that not only is the upper layers far older than claimed, but the entire wall sits upon a foundation immensely older than the wall we see today. A foundation that many have concluded is so old that it had simply turned to dust through the eons, rebuilt at a currently unknown time within antiquity. The wall stretches an astonishing 22 miles, and once protected hundreds of extremely ancient dwellings, and measured at over 40 feet thick, to suggest that such a feat could have been accomplished by our more recent ancestors, who the founders of mainstream academia permits, is a tough posit to agree with. For if such claim were true, why is the wall seemingly ignored by modern history? I feel the reason the wall has been successfully kept largely unknown is due to the fact that if openly studied and widely known of, more people would research such site, eventually realizing, like many before them, that the wall is far older than currently claimed and possesses such enormous amounts of stone along with an immensely older foundation that current claims of its origins and age are simply incorrect, and a clear attempt to shrug off this astonishing structure as a reasonably modern creation which they hope will not be looked at closely. An attempt to close the book on a possible antediluvian ruin, which many people as a result told with a dull deceptive history for its existence, which not only stifles one's interest regarding the wall's origin, but deters the curious from ever investigating the wall's truly astonishing nature. A motivation which I feel is the main driving force behind its lack of public exposure. Who rebuilt the Great Wall of India? How old is its far older, highly eroded foundation? 
The Great Wall of India was an astonishing feat of ancient engineering, a feat that academia would prefer stay largely unknown, a reality which I find highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.